Hi, my name is Mara and I'm a Glendon Campus Student E-Ambassador. So the school year is almost over, which is pretty crazy to take in. It has felt so long. From today, I have exactly three weeks left of school until my last exam is done. It's finally starting to warm up outside and honestly, I just can't wait to be done. But just because I'm done with the 2020-2021 school year does not mean I'm done for good. I am going to be doing summer school. I've always been someone that actually kind of liked summer school. I did it for two summers in high school and then last summer I did it at York. So the way it works at York is very different and it's kind of confusing at first when you're trying to actually plan your summer. Also, yes, I am sitting on the floor filming this today. There's good lighting, it's comfortable. It's just that type of day. So let's start with how summer courses work at Glendon and at York. It's very similar to the regular school year. It's just in a condensed time period. So what I mean by that is there's still two terms. There's two exam terms and each term is about two months each. So half the amount of time that it normally would be. But you sign up for summer courses just like you would any other one on the York website. So there's still the option to take three credit courses and six credit courses. And for the most part, a three credit course would be offered for one term of the summer and a six credit course would be offered throughout both terms of the summer. Again, similar to the way it works during regular school year. So just to make it easier to understand, I'll explain my summer courses from last year. So in the 2020 summer, I signed up for two three credit courses. The first one was Introduction to Microeconomics and the second one was Intro to Macroeconomics. These are both three credit courses. So the Intro to Micro, I took took in the first summer term and the intro to macro I took in the second summer term. For intro to micro, it began around the start of May and I had the class two days a week instead of what would normally be one day a week. And then for the last week of June, there was an exam period and I had my exam. Then it was kind of the same schedule for intro to macro. It started in July, I had it twice a week, and then near the end of August, there was another short exam period and I had an exam for intro to macroeconomics. And that's just the basic setup to do one course at a time. I could have done both at the same time in the first term of the summer. So I think that explains pretty simply how the summer terms work. Now for picking summer courses and enrolling in them. Courses offered in the summer are pretty much the courses offered during the school year. But it's not like every single course that is offered during the school year will be offered during the summer. If you have a specific course that is required for you and you need to complete it, it might not be offered in the summer. It also depends on the program in international studies at Glendon there's not a lot of summer courses offered at all so that's why last summer I did the econ courses because they're still required for my degree and there's a lot more of those courses offered but the summer is the perfect time to knock off a required course that is available or to just take some electives and maybe take it easy you can also take up to 18 credits per summer term so it would be 36 total for the summer I only did six total last summer I could have done 30 more. It really is up to you how many you would want to take based off your summer schedule. The one thing I don't love about signing up for summer courses is having such a late enrollment date. This year I plan again to take probably six credits in the summer. And my enrollment window is April 14th, which would be less than a month before summer courses start. This just makes it a little hard to plan the rest of my life around the summer courses since I don't even know what day I'm gonna have class yet and what I'm gonna be taking until I enroll. So also just a good tip for any enrollment time, but especially for the summer. I do have a few courses I'm looking at for the summer and it's always good to have more than one or two options in case that class does get filled up by the time your enrollment window is open and you go on to sign up, the class might be full already. So it's just good to have a few options. So now for the why, why should you do summer school? Why do I do it? What's the point? Of course, last year the summer term was near the start of the lockdown here. I know I didn't have anything else I could do. My job got canceled. The summer wasn't looking too great. It was surprising to me about the courses since I was taking them through the Kiel campus instead of Glendon. The class sizes were a lot bigger. Whenever I go on the Zoom, 
there was like a hundred students which I had never seen before I had seen maybe like 60 students as a max at Glendon so having over a hundred students I was like whoa this is a lot of people but it can be really helpful to get these extra credits in the summer I liked doing two courses in the summer so I could end up taking two less during this past school year five courses can be a lot it can be really overwhelming and especially with the big adjustment to online learning I really preferred having the option to just do four courses in the fall term and four courses in the winter term now. What can also be really great about summer courses is it's a chance to get ahead. If you want to get ahead for whatever reason, maybe graduate earlier than expected, getting a lot of credits in the summer can help you not need to take as many during the year in the future. Also, I know people take summer courses sometimes to get their grades up for another course during the year that maybe didn't go exactly how they wanted it to. But really what's great about the summer term is it's up to you to choose how you want to use the credits you get. So what's really awesome about being a Glendon student, as always, you can take summer courses at Glendon or through the Kiel campus, like I said I did last year. I think again for this summer, I will be taking courses through the Kiel campus just because they have kind of what I want and what I need. What's also great is OSAP is still offered for summer courses. So if you sign up for OSAP, that's still going to be offered to you. It's not any different for the summer. You just send in another application. And since it really is up to you to take as many courses as you want, there's not really any pressure to take a specific amount. I find as much as there is during the school year. So if you have a job during the summer, you can definitely still do summer courses depending on how many hours you work and what your availability is. If you just want to relax all summer and tan in the sun, you can also work that around your courses. Since it's online, you can do your courses while tanning in the sun. So I really do recommend taking some summer courses and having some extra credits. It can't hurt. So hopefully all this information about summer courses can be helpful for you with mapping your degree and planning everything out. Remember what I said at the start of the video, only a few weeks left of school. We're almost done so good luck to everyone thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next week